2024 NFL Draft is finally in the books. The Bengals made some great draft picks, and they made some not-so-great draft picks. I'm going to be briefly talking about each pick and grading the overall draft for the Bengals in this year's NFL Draft. So let's go ahead and get started here. Some of these picks, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I've already kind of talked about this on previous videos. The Bengals took Amir Smims, the tackle from Georgia, with the 18th overall pick. If you've seen any of my draft videos about Cincinnati, you know that I hate this pick so much. Um, I was literally wanting anybody at 18 except Mims. I just think it's very, very risky taking a guy who has eight career starts. He had ankle surgery this past season. And the fact that we can't develop offensive linemen, it's very, very risky for Cincinnati. I hope he's a good lineman for us, but I just kind of have my doubts a little bit. I think he's more of a project than people realize. But to take Mims with the 18th overall pick, I was not really a fan of that pick at all. It's probably my least favorite pick of any selection the Bengals made in this year's draft. Our second round pick, I, I really, really liked. You know, we took defensive tackle Chris Jenkins from Michigan. He was the best defensive tackle on the board. And around this, you know, time of the draft, tackles are really starting to, to fall. You know, Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle from Texas, was already gone. And he was the guy who was projected, you know, in the third. So the Bengals went ahead and took a defensive tackle because realistically, when it comes to their 80th pick, their next selection, guys like Michael Hall Jr., guys like Chris Jenkins would have probably been gone. It's safe and it's better to go ahead and get your guy in Jenkins. And BJ Hill only has one year left on his contract. We very well could see, you know, Jenkins take over the uh, spot that BJ Hill has right now. I may be the starter next year for Cincinnati, but this is a very, very solid pickup here by the Bengals. Their third round selection, I like this quite a bit here. They take Alabama wide receiver Jermaine Burton with the 80th pick overall. Burton was the guy when I was doing Bengals, you know, mod drafts. There were several different times I had Cincinnati take Burton. And this is a great, you know, selection here. This past season, Burton had 39 receptions, 798 receiving yards, 20 and a half yards per reception, eight touchdowns. Jermaine Burton was just one of two draft eligible wide receivers to have a drop rate of 0% last season. The one knock on Burton is his character issues. You know, he had an incident with a Tennessee fan not too long ago. And he's also been at six schools the last eight years. I think that's a little bit concerning, but I think it's, you know, not bad enough to, you know, pass up on it here. The Bengals get a great receiver here in the third round, taking Jermaine Burton. The Bengals had two third-round picks, and with their second third-round pick, they take McKinley Johnson, defensive tackle from AM. I do not like this pick at all. Um, you know, he is a more so of a nose tackle. He could be kind of more of a replacement for DJ Reader. I just don't think it's going to work out. Uh, this was a reach. He could have been there at 115, their next pick. There were way too many better players available. Guys like Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. And, of course, you know, Pittsburgh ended up selecting Wilson. But I did not like this pick. I thought this was a major reach. Killing Johnson was my second least favorite pick uh, right behind Amarius Mims. With the 115th pick, they took Iowa tight end Eric All. Now, this has a potential to be very, very good for Cincinnati and also has potential to be not so great. Eric All, if it wasn't for injuries, he would have been drafted easily on day two. This past season for Iowa, he had 21 receptions, 299 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. Injuries are a major concern for Eric All. He tore his ACL back in October, and he also had back surgery during the 2022 season. So if he's able to stay healthy, I think this is a great selection by Cincinnati. Just don't know if he's going to be able to stay healthy or not. Taking All here is a little bit of a risk, but I think it definitely has a chance to pay off for the Bengals. Their fifth round pick, I like this pick quite a bit. They take TCU cornerback Josh Newton. Josh Newton was one of the most experienced cornerbacks in this year's draft. He has a whopping over 4,000 career snaps in his collegiate career. Career. Newton had 413 coverage snaps last season and allowed just one touchdown. And according to Pro Football Focus, he had an 87.7 grade since 2022 and had his first among Big 12 corners. Josh Newton was a guy I kind of forgot about, you know, on day three of the draft, but I think it's a very solid pickup here for Cincinnati. Uh, he was one of the better corners here available. And, you know, the Bengals did not take a corner up until the fifth round and they get one of the best ones. I think it's a pretty solid pickup here by Cincinnati. So the Bengals had two sixth round picks and two seventh round picks. And pretty much regardless of who they took with these four final selections, I did not like it because with us having such a great roster already, there is a 0% chance all four of these picks are going to make the roster. I don't know why we did not just use some of these later round picks to maybe just trade up a couple and maybe get a better player and also, you know, have less picks, less players we had to deal with and, you know, less roster spots we're taking up and everything like that. But with our first six round pick, they take Arizona tight end Tanner McLaughlin. McLaughlin had 45 receptions this past season for 528 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, this is a solid pickup here, but I just don't really understand going to tight end. There were several, several better players available, in my opinion, and there were players who were better, and they also were more team needs. 
Um, I don't hate this pick, but I don't also love it by Cincinnati. I'd say it's about an average pick for the Bengals. And with their second sixth round pick, it took Cedric Johnson, the edge rusher from Ole Miss. Johnson, the 6'4", 240 pound edge rusher for the Rebels, had six and a half tackles for loss this past season and five and a half sacks. This is another pick. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just really kind of feel like there were better players available that also was more of team needs. With their first seventh round pick, they took Ole Miss safety, Dejon Anthony. Anthony is a transfer from Liberty. This past season was his only season with Ole Miss. He had 61 tackles to go along with three interceptions and eight passes defended. Once again, this wasn't a bad pick. I just feel like there were way better players available here. And when you have some of these picks here that aren't great, they're just kind of average when it comes to the sixth or seventh round. It kind of goes back to what I'm saying. You're better off just kind of trading up to get better players and it's less roster spots you're taking up when you have so many late round picks. But the Bengals made up for it here with their final selection in the draft. I think this was one of their better picks in the whole entire draft. And you can make a case this might have been their best selection just on value. You know, the Bengals took Miami center Matt Lee with their final pick, and this is a fantastic pick. They took a need, and they took best player available. Regardless of when that happens, whether it's the first round, whether it's the seventh round, anytime you take a player that's a team need, he's also best player available. It is an A-plus pick every single time, and this is exactly what it was here for Cincinnati. It was an A-plus pick, in my opinion. You know, Ted Karras, the Bengals center, has been pretty good for Cincinnati, but he only has one year left on his contract with the Bengals. And you look at Matt Lee, he has the ninth highest career pass block grade among all draft eligible offensive linemen. That's higher than some of the top offensive linemen in this year's draft. You know, higher than Fuega, higher than Mims, higher than the interior offensive linemen guys like Jackson Powers Johnson and Frazier from West Virginia. And, you know, this is a guy who can maybe even be the eventual starter and take over Ted Karras' spot one year from now. It is a low risk, extremely high reward for Cincinnati. If it doesn't pay off, fine. You know, it is a seventh round pick. But if it does pay off, you're getting a possible starter in a seventh round pick. So when you're looking at the Bengals draft class this season, I feel like there were lots of good picks and lots of picks that were kind of questionable and not so great. Obviously, the not so great picks, in my opinion, are Mims, McKinley Johnson, uh, pretty much all of these sixth and seventh round picks, aside from Matt Lee, I really like the Chris Jenkins, Jermaine Burton, Eric All, Newton, and Matt Lee picks. So kind of half and half. Half the picks I liked quite a bit. Half the picks not so much. So when you're looking at this Bengals 2024 draft, I would give them a B minus just because the picks that they messed up on, I think they were really, really bad picks. But the picks that they did good on, I thought they were very good value picks. Then you know, this draft was a little bit better than I thought. Like I said, there were some picks I like, some picks not so much. But overall, I'm kind of content with the Bengals 2024 draft. Uh, comment your thoughts on the Bengals draft. Comment your favorite picks in the draft and comment your least favorite picks in the draft. But that about does it for this video. If you're new to my channel or if you've seen my videos before, make sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time on the Sports 2 Hind Show.